It's whack that the DNC won't let nobody prime. They won't do no primaries next year, man. Do a primary debate. They Put Joe Biden up on that stage with Bobby Kennedy, who's challenging him, and Marianne Williamson, and whoever steps up to the plate. And let's have a discussion, yo. Is podcast host Charlemagne skewering Democrats who want to keep President Biden out of the debates? Well, we have a Republican presidential candidate who is ready to debate anyone from either party. Vivek Ramaswamy is here. Vivek, great to see you. Thank you for joining us. You just challenged Bobby Kennedy, the Democrat, to a debate. Have you gotten any response yet? So, look, I've been in touch with Bobby Kennedy. I think very highly of him. I disagree with him on a lot of issues. I think we need to have that debate in the country more openly. So he hasn't yet responded to this challenge to a okay. debate that many people have been calling calling for. But I think the Democrats are the party that's hiding from debate right now. They're protecting Joe Biden as their puppet. I think we in the Republican Party need to be better than that and say that we're the party of free speech and open debate. We embrace that because we're on the winning side of these arguments. And I'm willing to be our standard bearer to actually take that debate to the other side's home Okay. And it's with Don Lemon or the Democrats who were running for president. That's what I'm doing. All right. All right. Well, we're, we're having a, just so you know, that's not as, as clean a shot as we would like. There, there are little blurps in there, but so far, so good. So we'll keep it going. But I, I want to ask about a Republican debate because there is okay. a question about whether or not uh, if Ron DeSantis keeps going down in the numbers and he's taking a couple of hits, primarily because of Disney, and we'll talk about that. But but uh, if he pulls out, Donald Trump might not debate anybody else who's running for the, the Republican nomination. Uh, do you, does that concern you? I think that would be a big mistake for our party and for our movement. I think we have to be Donald Trump did well in 2015 by elevating issues in the debate. That's what we need to do this time around say what we stand for and why we stand for it, not just obsess over the question of the who. That's going to make the conservative movement better. I think it's going to make the country better off, too. And I think that that's something that we need to actually embrace in our party. So I think that, you know what, other candidates, including Trump, perhaps, may not relish being on the debate stage with me. I think that's still going to be a good thing for our party to see that through. And I'm not going to let anybody, I think, evade the debate stage. I think that's actually going to be really important for success in the next election, which I think we can win in a landslide. Well, Vivek, yeah. speaking of, by the way, you've got an audience behind you. You're on the campaign trail in South Carolina. Yes. Uh, speaking of embracing, you, you do embrace a lot of what... What DeSantis says about woke policies uh, and, and the harm they do to our nation. You share a lot of those views, but I'm wondering if you share his his way of negotiating with Disney on that particular issue. So, look, I, I, I respect Governor DeSantis for taking a lot of what I have written in Woke Inc. and implementing that into Florida. That's exactly what happened. And I, I respect him for being an implementer. However, I think that Part of what's going on with Disney is that he said he wanted to roll back those special privileges. Unfortunately, one of the special privileges was legislated into law under Ron DeSantis himself, which was actually an exemption from their political anti-discrimination statute that he passed. And I think that undermines the credibility of that crusade. I'm surprised that that hasn't been more widely reported in the media. But I do think the right thing that we got to do is actually let companies be companies. Go back to focusing on making products and services for profit without apologizing for it, without mixing these politics into that boardroom. I think that a big part of what Governor DeSantis is doing is he's trying to call attention to that. But unfortunately, many of the crony capitalist privileges, like special exemptions that Disney enjoyed, were unfortunately passed into law under DeSantis' own watch, mm. which I think actually undermines the credibility of his ability to All go right. after them using state power the now. Vague, so let I me, think that's the reality. Let me ask you about something that's happening in the news right now and how you would deal with some of these issues. Uh, the debate over the budget. Of course, uh, the, the president is not meeting with the Republicans at all, with Speaker McCarthy. But the Republicans have put out some of their what they would like to cut from this this huge uh, trillion dollar, multi trillion dollar increase in the budget. They want to rescind funding for the IRS agents, the eighty seven thousand IRS agents. They want to reallocate unspent covid-19 relief money. They want to eliminate Biden's student loan forgiveness plan. What what are some of the suggestions you would have for cutting the budget? So, look, I think that we should actually talk more about GDP growth in this country. 
There's this debate about tax increases that Democrats want versus spending cuts that Republicans want. I I do think there are room for smart spending cuts. But actually, what we really need to do is revive economic growth itself. It's as though we've forgotten that's an option. Unshackle ourselves from this climate cult that holds the United States back while leaving China untouched. Put people back to work. Reform the Federal Reserve. And I think if we're going growing back again above three plus percent, and I think we can get to five plus percent GDP growth, our our fiscal problems become small by comparison. Mm -hmm. So that's where my focus is. And I think that that's going to actually be what leads us out of our fiscal problems, not just wearing bifocal glasses and playing accountants with tax increases or small spending. You're absolutely right. We have an anemic growth rate right now. We just got the GDP numbers this week. 1.1 percent. It was half of what we expected. But you are on the record for one wanting to eliminate some some departments completely, like the Department of Education. I just want to read to you the mission statement of the Department of Education. It says, our mission is to promote student achievement and preparation for global competitiveness by fostering educational excellence and ensuring equal access. Well, uh, we have seen test scores go way down. Globally, we're kind of a laughing stock. And when you compare us to, to China or some of our major competitors, uh, and yet we're spending more money than ever, 80 to 90 billion dollars in the Department of Education, uh, 182 billion in COVID relief for K through 12. Uh, how would you reapportion that money uh, to help our schools quickly? Well, the Department of Education should have never existed. That's why I will shut it down. That $83 billion is misspent. For just 25% of that, we could put three armed security guards in every school across this country. It's not even close, which is a better use of money. On top of that, you could take underfunded school choice programs across the country and actually put educational choice back in the hands of parents, get the federal government out of the way. And that's why I'm going further than even Trump did. Shut down the department. Don't just reform it. That's my view of how you handle the administrative state. Well, it helps to have a cheering crowd behind you when you say these things. Vivek, I I appreciate you coming from the campaign trail in South Carolina, beautiful state of South Carolina. Uh, Good luck to you. Safe travels, my friend. And thank you very much for coming in today. I appreciate it. Thank you. People here are energized and hopefully across the country too, David. Great to see you. Thank you very much. And thanks to the crowd as well.